in addition to what we already discussed, uh, many other things can be candidates for uh, classes um, in our system. Events. Hmm. Uh, let me give you an example of an event. So we have some sort of user interface. Okay, so there is a user screen and the user interacts uh, with uh, uh, gadgets and features available in this user interface. Now also we have a database. Okay, so we have a database with lots of information and we need to be able to search the database, update the database and so forth. So some of these uh, processes right here at the database level may take a longer time. For instance, it, uh, some of the updates or searches could take uh, some seconds and uh, sometimes uh, a delay of 5 or 10 or 30 seconds uh, is a little bit unacceptable for a user interface. So we don't want to freeze this user interface. How can we solve uh, this, um, um, uh, this freeze problem? Very likely what we want is that we need to somehow initial, initiate transaction in a database and by the time it completes be able to essentially create some kind of notification right here part of user interface so the user is notified that their um, action is complete and now they can go back to the task which required um, you know, extra time for processing. So meanwhile, before this happened, uh, the user could do other things in the system. So the, the system, the user interface uh, uh, remains responsible and interactive, not frozen. So this is what we can do. We can create an event initiated by the user. Okay, we can create an, uh, an event initiated by the user. And we can place this event in a queue. Okay, so we can have a queue. This is just a notation for the queue. So um, part of our user interface activity that we deposit an object, create this object, this event, um, we deposit it into a queue. And then once we deposit this object, we come back and continue our uh, user uh, interaction um, in this part of the system. At the same time, we can have a thread of execution dedicated to servicing the queue. And so it will retrieve this object from the queue. It will, it will essentially parse the information requested by this event object. So this is our event object right here. Um, and uh, um, it will then uh, uh, do necessary work, uh, dedicate itself to work uh, um, uh, and uh, process the request uh, to uh, work with the database or some other part of the system that requires um, extra time for processing to complete. And by the time this process is complete, we may then deposit another um, uh, event um, in the queue Okay, create another event object in the queue. And we can have our user interface periodically check uh, the queue for objects intended for, um, uh, for the user interface. And if that check completes with the result that yes, there is an object intended for uh, processing by user interface, again, it can be retrieved and it may result in displaying this information um, in the user interface. So this is very, um, you know, very uh, imprecise. This is not technically um, exact uh, type of organization or anything, but that's just the idea that mm, instead of some action taken, uh, taking um, instant uh, uh, servicing, we can just make a recording of a request of this processing, create an event object, place it in some queue, and at some point it will be serviced, and at some point the, the result will be also dele um, uh, delegated to the queue and eventually become visible back to the user. So it could be interaction between the user interface and other parts of the system or even between uh, different machines. Um, so the queues and events, uh, event queues in general, are very effective way to manage distributed systems, distributed uh, processing, um, asynchronous processing, 
and uh, that is just uh, something that we need to uh, keep an eye on again as we start looking at our processes we may recognize both transactions that we discussed in the previous video and also the need for events uh, based on the timing of um, different steps in the processing we already mentioned organizational structures that may also contribute uh, to a creation of certain classes. Uh, the focus is that we just need to be able to recognize some kind of organizational uh, value. Uh, and if we can clearly describe the responsibility of a department or division or some other type of organizational structure, um, uh, we can, uh, and, and, and if this class could perform certain operations that the system needs, of course, this becomes a great candidate to become a class in the system. Uh, rules and policies, okay? So sometimes, uh, for instance, uh, uh, to give you an example of this, um, we can uh, try to organize uh, a system that processes all sorts of documentation. So we have some documents stored as files on the file system, right? So these documents are, you know, using certain formats. Well, uh, part of that format could be like um, indentation, white space type of formatting, like commonly is found in source files. Uh, of uh, programming languages or it can be just a document that is formatted for you know the headings and paragraphs and so forth so uh, for instance we want to design a documentation management system which is capable of uh, loading and processing all of this information so essentially we need to interpret the content of these files with the different formats and be able to translate all of this into some sort of common already parsed version of this document which is now directly like perhaps encapsulated in the object and now it could be essentially processed by the rest of our system so then in order to be able to process these different document formats successfully and produce the desired format in computer memory what we can do for each type of the document we can create a, a set of rules in, um, encapsulated by a certain object or maybe even combination of objects and for each type of the document we can have a set of rules like this right so we can we can uh, create different objects in memory that designed to contain certain rules and policies for white space keywords uh, paragraph formatting uh, html tags it's just like endless uh, very rich uh, source of rules contents and policies for processing uh, the input um, and then we can apply a general process like basically maybe as simple as top-down approach which is designed instead of up, um, accessing and processing the the individual uh, document it may be basically rely on on consistent uh, public interface of these policies and uh, be able to extract and process this information in a very uniform way so the output of this uh, processor um, relying on uh, specific uh, rules that we create will generate this desired internal format uh, that we'd like to be able to get to uh, as soon as we open and process the input from these different types of source files. So this is an idea of objects that are designated as rules and policies. And uh, this can be a great range of things. It may not necessarily be something as technical as I'm trying to dis describe to you with respect to processing input from files. This could also be a set of um, business uh, regulations and uh, legal rules um, and uh, all sorts of other things that basically uh, these rules and policies probably work in close connection with processes with classes that identify processes so right here this is an example 
of a pro, uh, process in a system, right? So it's trying to be uniform for all of these things, right? Uh, but uh, the formats are different, so rules and policies implement uh, unique um, unique rules for each situation. So this may be very technical, or this can be um, just purely derived from the business rules and legal terms and so forth. Uh, for instance, maybe we want to be able to uh, discard certain parts of the input based on the business rules. And that can be achieved again by implementing additional rules. It is also possible to combine rules and policies into a chain of rules and policies okay so we can we can combine them into a chain basically having one set of rules another set of rules another set of rules and essentially start processing in a matter of like when this is completing we start the next set of rules to complete the next set of rules to complete and finally with all with all of this when it's when it's all completed we can have some kind of output uh, generated out of this chained uh, version of uh, rules and policies uh, which themselves don't make a lot of processing however they're driven by the processor of some kind right the object that is uh, facilitating uh, certain process such as uh, search uh, loading saving mm, uh, modifying transforming uh, things like uh, image recognition uh, face recognition processes, encryption, decryption. Uh, there's just like endless, endless list of things which combine themselves very nice with all sorts of rules and policies um, and uh, any kind of a stream oriented process uh, can be very easily uh, made adaptable uh, for a set of rules and policies which can be plugged in into the process. And contracts or formalized relationships, uh, for instance, uh, you can again have um, basically uh, you can have a, a car registration uh, object in the system. Uh, you can have a driver license. You can have insurance policy um, and uh, and things of that nature. So some of these things um, create a contract. For instance, if this is a driver license, we can have a class representing a a client in our system. And then, of course, um, uh, there there may be the license, the driver license, or some other document. Maybe a document that that is binding. Uh, by a contract uh, uh, this uh, can have an expiration time and all sorts of validity rules so any kind of contract uh, that is just like um, a, a, a set of bounding um, uh, business rules or legal rules uh, can be also a very nice candidate uh, for a class in a system and sometimes even a hierarchy of classes in the system.